Good afternoon, flower friends. This is a Sunday afternoon. It's finally warming up. It was cold here for several days. I did not want to get out here at all and do anything. Um, if I did, it was very quick. So I got indoor chores done. Um, today I was working on a small project I've been thinking about. I went to visit a garden friend uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, her Instagram handle is joys underscore garden or gardens. One of those two. And she had the neatest little thing. She had a, this is a barrel, like a wine barrel ring. And my husband kind of formed this one. This one was tough, so it's not quite as heart shaped as the other one he made me that I've already got on the ground. Anyway, she had it filled with gravel, stones, and whatever, and it was so cute. I loved it. She had a couple of them. Um, but I thought I had some ground cover I wanted to move, and it's Irish moss. Where I have it in the summer, midsummer, it gets so hot, it just scorches it. So I was thinking of moving it, and I thought that would be really pretty over in this other spot I'm going to put it, but inside that heart ring, so it made a heart shape of the moss. I have no idea if this is going to work, but I thought I'd give it a try, and I'll show you how I dig it up, how I move it, plant it in that ring, and then later on I'll show you whether it works or not. But um, it just makes a nice element in the garden as you walk around a path to see something like that. And I just thought it was a really cool idea. So thanks for the idea, Joy. All right, let's get to digging. So here next to this stepping stone, free of my shadow, is the iris moss I'm going to dig up. Kind of weed in it. Anyways, you see how it's blooming so pretty? I'm just going to dig up portions of it. I'm not going to dig up all of it, even though this, maybe I should go around the other side. Even though this um, is very tough and it, this should not hurt it at all, I don't, I don't want to lose all of it. So I will leave some in the ground to continue on. And hopefully I didn't get my head in the way, but there's a nice good portion. I dig down deep and I'll fill in later with some compost or other soil or whatever to, to fill in the hole. And just going to keep taking pieces blooming really pretty right now. It usually blooms like the one time in spring. And this is a nice size, but I think it's really going to like the spot I'm putting it. And hopefully it will thrive there and fill in. Okay, that's enough for now. I'll take these and maybe I'll save some for another project. But oops, slug. Okay, there's the dig up portion. Now let's go plant it show you the difference of where it is. Here this was by the centerpiece and where I'm going to put it is over there underneath where that barrel is that's got the uh, solar fountain in it. It's going to be under there. It will get some sun but not as much as it gets in this spot here where it has been at. So here's the spot. Hopefully it's not too much in shadow. But I had already put some potting soil in here from some pots that uh, I had seeded some hostas and then I promptly killed them. But anyways, um, I'm just going to dig down where this can fit down in there. You know, it's, the moss is not very deep as far as the roots. And I just want it to be at the right level there. And I'm just going to fill in a few spots. I've got uh, three or four pieces that I have... Um, up. Whoops. My fountain is overflowing. The sun came out again. So hopefully, as I said before, it's not throwing it too much in shadow. And I'll go get the other two pieces to put in here. And if I, I may dig up some more. So here's the final three pieces. And like I said, I'm spreading them around. I'm hoping it'll grow and then knit together and this whole thing will be a solid lime green. I'm trying to pull out any weed seeds or weeds crop it up in the middle of this that I see. So I, because I don't want weeds in here, I just want the iris moss. Irish moss, not iris. Irish. Okay, this one has a bit more soil. Put that in there. And then, huh, maybe I'll cut this one in half. There we go. Try not 
trust me, that won't hurt it. Okay, that one over here, and this one over here. Weed, weed there. Okay, now I, the hummingbirds are flitting over my head. I will bring in some more soil to fill this up, and I will kind of fill in with soil in areas that are kind of shallow. And around the edges, I think I'm gonna put gravel. So I don't have any gravel right now. Don't look, I'm gonna pull out a foxglove that I don't want there. Um, anyways, that will make it clean and tidy around the edges. So that is the way I'm gonna finish it off. Now I'll bring you back to see how it's doing in later weeks, months, whatever it takes to uh, show you how it fills in. And I may go get, a, there was plenty over there, maybe another chunk to put right here. The more I put in there, the faster it will fill in and um, become one solid lime green color. So there's that. And I, like I said, I'll be sure to come back and share how it turns out. Hello, garden friends. Today, I'm finally getting to the long promised video on how I created my mossy heart. Most of you probably figured it out because it's pretty easy, but I know a lot of people like to see things done or how they're done. So I will show you a picture of my mossy heart, my original mossy heart, and then I'm gonna show you how I'm making this second one, which is the same way I made the first. So let's take a look at the first mossy heart. So down here is my original mossy heart and look how well it's filled in. You've seen it throughout my Secret Cottage Garden videos and the various stages it has gone through. And now let's go on over and let's work on our new one. So I think you can see under here. So I have the metal. This is from a wine barrel metal ring that my husband shaped into a heart for me. I may need to move you lower. And then I started tearing up pieces of cardboard to set around the perimeter to block weeds. Now, some of these spaces are real small and I have some brown craft paper that I use in my studio when I'm doing painting tutorials. And I'm gonna finish filling in these areas with that craft paper. So I will go get that and we will just put that in there really quickly. And you can see, this has been in here a little bit. This is um, not only this big chunk that I pulled out of the middle of the garden where it was in the pathway, but these two little pieces that I pulled up from the other section. And I'll show you how I did that because I can pull up some more to help this to fill in even faster than it is now when I put more in it. I'm just pulling out the little weeds that have sprouted inside here that will compete. But once the moss is filled in, um, it'll be, much fewer weeds germinating in here. So I will go get that paper and we will put it down. So hopefully this won't be too loud for you, but here's the brown paper. This is actually the paper that you can buy at Home Depot or Lowe's in the paint department and they use it as drop cloths in different areas. And I'm just going to tear it into pieces <clears throat> and fill in the blanks where the um, cardboard boxes are not. Now, this could easily be done with more cardboard, but this is an option that I find it a little bit more malleable and um, sometimes easier to work with. And it does the job too. There's some alyssum back in there, but I'm gonna cover that area with the paper. And then we will go ahead and fill in. But, all right, now I will go get my stones. Some of them I pull out, I'm gonna paint. I just think they're the good size to do fun little paintings on. I could put those in here too, the little painted rocks. Okay. Oh no, wait, let's go chop up some of the other iris, Irish moss, and bring it over here. So here's our original where we are going to borrow, take some more iris moss from to uh, make it quicker 
for the other one to fill in. See how it's coming up over the edge? I'm just going to go along the edge with my little handy dandy trowel. I could also have used my garden knife for this. And I'm just going to cut. And then I'm going to go underneath and pull that up. And hopefully I got roots. And it wasn't just plant. So, oops, scoot that away side. So see this, I'm going to go put this over. Maybe I'll take two sections. This one right here is filling in nicely too. So I'm going to come back a little bit further, make it a nice thick mat. And you notice how there's no weeds in there. Well, hardly any weeds. So let me get this, make sure it's cut away, and then lift it. And that should fill back in fairly quickly. So let's take this over to the other part. Here we are, and I'm going to fill in like way back here, because there's nothing back there, with this big chunk back there, and tuck it in, and then the smaller chunk broke away. There's two chunks now. This one can go right here. Some of it may die off and then start to come back in. So then I can fill in right here with this piece. And then I'll just make sure to water it well and then it will uh, keep on filling in. I'm just raking away some of these sprouted little plants. A lot of them are actually flowers, like larkspur and whatever that were growing around here, and the seeds were in the ground. But that is how I will help this one fill in more quickly by adding from the other one, which, you know, that had filled in. It just, it took most of the summer, but we just had a couple of little pieces in there like this. So that's that part. Now let's get the rock and put the rock in. Now down here you'll see my bag of rocks. This one is the extra large river rocks. This one I think is more in the brown tones where my other ones were in the gray. These ones I have here I had picked up up on the river um, a couple months ago. Now here in California you can collect some rocks um, just every trip it only can be a certain weight so um, that's where I got those and I haven't been back up there to get more so I went to Lowe's to get some more rocks and I think like I said this one is more of a brown tone it tones but you can get the gray cones or tones they're just more expensive for some reason um, and funny story is I was as I was checking out at Lowe's I had, an older man was helping me and he was like, you come to Lowe's to buy rock? You gotta be kidding me. And truth of the matter is, by the time I pay gas and my time to go up and collect rocks, it's cheaper for me to buy them. And I don't have rocks on my property. So there's that. You can buy rocks at Home Depot and Lowe's. I'm just gonna start randomly tossing these larger rocks out. I may not use all of them because I have the next size down. Um, to fill in and some pea gravel and that's what I did oh that's a pretty one what I did on the other one but when you have the various size rocks it just gives it some nice interest and I may just go from this one to the pea gravel it just has a lot of oh here's a nice big oh isn't that one interesting that's cool I'll put that one towards the front I like that Trying to dig out some of the larger ones rather than the smaller. Some towards the back. These ones are all dirty. Once I wash them off, they might be much prettier. Bugs leave me alone. Ooh, big old fat spider in there. him go. Go 
want, Spider? Go eat things in the garden. Okay. I'm just gonna pour out the rest right here. In front, sorry. Uh, hmm. Maybe I will use them all, just for fun. And then go ahead and fill in with the other rocks or throw some of these rocks on top of the pea gravel for fun too. That's a pretty gray one. All right, now I'll go get the pea gravel. So I got this pea gravel also at Lowe's. I think the pea gravel was like $4 a bag and the rocks were like five. And I'm just gonna start filling in. I think it will probably take two bags of the pea gravel to fill in. Maybe I'll throw some more bigger rocks over here. And you just fill in. I'll probably speed this up because it's pretty boring. Okay, so I will finish up with the other bag and I will bring it out a little ways in front a little more. And that basically is how I do it. I'll come back after I finished everything and give you a final overall shot of it. Okay, be right back. And that my friends is how I created my mossy heart wreath and made it the focal point. The rocks around it just all draw the eye to the center because of that chartreuse color and it will be gorgeous just like the other one in no time. Um, I did, let me see if I can point you down a little further. I did put in another little stepping stone here. It's, they're not level. Um, gophers and stuff have gotten in here and made them different levels and they will continue to do so. I just noticed I've got more this fall. So I didn't worry about leveling that. I did have to take out over here a bit of this iris, but that's okay. It needed to be thinned anyways and made room for that stone and more rocks. So there you have it, a mossy heart wreath. I have a question for you. Now that we're done with my mossy heart wreath, what would you have put in the center? If this was in full sun, this is shady. This is mostly shady. So the moss works here. If this was full sun, it would scorch it. So it wouldn't work. Um, and it gets consistent moisture from the fountain overhead. But I'm looking, I would love to put one in a full sun spot. I had thought of um, time, woolly time. Um, and I may try one with woolly time, but any suggestions you have for ground cover that takes full sun that stays fairly short? Uh, you want it to stay within the frame so that it looks like a heart, but um, please leave your answer in the comments below and I will see if I can do one of those. All right, I will see you in the next video. And if you haven't already, please subscribe, hit the thumbs up for this video and share with your friends.